parent is a wide open window into the human condition. For example, I'm constantly having to remind and encourage and cajole my young children to say please and thank you and share. But I never have to encourage them to say mine or to grab things that don't belong to them or to hoard toys from one another. Now where does this self-centered impulse come from? This is where the Bible is so helpful because it gives us a vocabulary to talk about why we seem to be born with this self-centered disposition. You see, on the one hand, we're told that when God created Adam and Eve, he created them in his image. And what that means, among other things, is that they reflected his goodness. And God affirmed their goodness when he looked at his creation, including Adam and Eve, and said, it is very good. So Adam and Eve had a perfect relationship with God. They were able to love and obey him perfectly. But then we're told that Satan tempted them with the lie that God isn't good, that he can't be trusted, that real freedom is found apart from God and his law. And so when Adam and Eve believed and acted on that lie, Paul tells us in Romans 5 that sin entered the world the way virus enters your body, infecting all mankind from that time on. This is why from my earliest days and my children's earliest days and in the future their ch children's earliest days, we all say mine. Now this doesn't mean that people are devoid of all goodness. We're made in God's image and therefore we're still capable of doing good and beautiful things. But sin has corrupted our ability to love and obey God with our whole hearts, strength, and mind. Sin has infected every part of us so that we're all born in sin and guilt, corrupt in our nature, and unable to keep God's law. Let me give you one example that has helped me over the years. Imagine a hungry lion and imagine putting two plates of food in front of him. One, a plate of raw red meat. The other, a plate of perfectly cooked string beans. Now the lion can choose either one, but because of his nature, he's always gonna choose the red meat. See, when Adam sinned as our representative, our nature became enslaved to sin so that we no longer want or seek God. But when Christ came, he was the second Adam. And where the first Adam failed, the second Adam succeeded. Where the first Adam brought death through his disobedience and selfishness, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, brought life through his obedience and sacrifice on the cross.